You will love his wit and smile When he shares his charm with you He's got a star that can't be denied On me, Pitt's life Come on and listen You will enjoy and learn If you're wise There's talking and singing Everything is there to keep you swinging We're glad you turned in To leave Pitt's life Welcome back to Southwest Florida. We're delighted to have here in the studio. I think it's his third time on the show, and certainly not his last time. Uh, now uh, in his third year as the president of Florida Gulf Coast University. So my first question to Dr. Bradshaw is, how's the state of Florida Gulf Coast University, sir? The state of FACU Mr. President. is exceptional, <laughs> absolutely exceptional. Uh, why, why would you say that? Well, we're seeing record enrollment. We have over 12,000 students this year. Our residence halls are full. Our academic programming is expanding. Uh, and um, I think the uh, success of our students is getting better and better. So we are very excited about what's happening. When you first took over, say, about close to three years ago, uh, and you look at where you are now a as a university, uh, and you look at some of the key goals that you wanted to accomplish, how are you, uh, let's, let's outline some of the goals and how you feel that you are in terms of the university moving towards those goals. Well, you, one thing that really strikes me that uh, I point out to people who visit my office, I could look out my office when I first got here and would not see three of the buildings that now exist there. Um, Luckert Hall for the Luckert College of Business, Holmes Hall for the UA Whitaker School of Engineering, and our most recent uh, academic and laboratory building, uh, Academic Building 7. All of those buildings were uh, completed with just in the last three years, and it's really um, actualizing a plan that had been put in place by my predecessors and people who were also here when those plans were developed and are still here now helping with the implementation. So it's been great. That's outstanding. One of the things that I've noticed, and I might, it might just be me as a conscientious observer, but I've noticed since you've become president that I see more of your faculty and administrative people out in the community involved with boards of directors, uh, nonprofit organizations, lending their expertise in the educational field. Is that something that you pushed when you came on that, hey, we want our faculty to be a part of the community, we want our administration to see you out there as well? I think one thing that has been core to uh, FTCU is our commitment to service. And our faculty and our students and our staff, they have always been community minded. And we are part of this community. We are not apart from it. So it may seem like you're seeing more. You probably are because we have more faculty and mm -hmm. staff. But I think what you're really seeing is our uh, reaffirmation, if you will, of our commitment to serving Southwest Florida. Mm -hmm. the, uh, you mentioned Southwest Florida. The, the population of your student body, is it primarily students from South West, West Florida? Is that your main objective? Or are you reaching out just as uh, outside of this area as well, trying to attract students? You know, Lee, when I first arrived here, about 60%, maybe a bit more, of the students came from Southwest Florida. But the demographics are shifting a bit of the students applying to FGCU. This fall, um, we had more applicants coming from Broward County as an example than from uh, any of the counties, five counties in southwest Florida. So I think what, what's happening is that people are beginning to learn more about FGCU, what we have to offer, and we're rapidly becoming the institution of choice of a wide range of students, not just in our region, but also throughout the state of Florida. And that says a lot, too, about your expansion. You, you, you articulated earlier about some of the administrative buildings, the, the faculty buildings that have come online. You also are moving to add more dormitory space now with the, with the acquisition of the college club apartment. Speak to that and how that's going to also impact the university as a, uh, a place to have that campus atmosphere. We had an opportunity uh, brought to us several months ago and that was the possible acquisition of what is now called College Club. We pursued that and we're in the final stages of acquiring College Club which you should know, and I'm announcing this to the public first time on the Lee Pitts show. Breaking news. Will be called West Lake Village. Okay. It's about one mile from uh, the university. It has 500 beds, uh, maybe a few more, and will allow us to expand our residential program because we have more and more students wanting to live in FGCU housing. So, in addition to West Lake Village, we have started uh, construction of another residence hall called Palmetto Hall, another major announcement uh, that's going up and will be ready for occupancy this upcoming fall, fall 011, and that's right on our campus. Okay, so we appreciate you breaking that news right here on Lee Pitts Live. Where else, Lee? Where, <laughs> Where else? else, Dr. Bradshaw? Let's go to um, the um, 
all the development that we see around the university. You see uh, the Gulf Town Center, the Gulf Coast Town Center. You see a lot of. Also, I see a lot of lots and things out there too. That, but how does the all the development that's happening around the university positively or negatively impact the university? I think those who are located uh, very close to the university, they fully appreciate the programming that we bring that they have access to. Clearly, the university is, uh, is a magnet for high quality uh, entertainment that we bring, uh, lecture series that we bring to the uh, region. And those who live near uh, or around the university, they take advantage of that. So the university is uh, certainly it, it's an institution of higher education, but we also are a social cultural hub for the region as well. You have, you have uh, you know, the Florida Gulf Coast University seems to have uh, um, taken the whole approach to the environmental, uh, environmentally sensitive university. How does that play out in the grand scheme of things in, in, in a positive way for our area? Well, I think one thing that is not mentioned often enough if, is that it's played out first in our curriculum. If you look at the uh, academic degree programs that we offer, we have degrees in environmental science, environmental engineering, environmental stud studies, both at the undergraduate and graduate uh, levels. And that's a testament to the commitment of our faculty. They understand our core values and our academic program, uh, our programming reflects that. Uh, we have the largest solar field on any single university campus in the country. We have over 10,000 solar panels as a part of that solar farm, and it produces enough electricity to, to power those three buildings that I mentioned earlier in, mm. the, uh, in the show. If you look at our um, conservation efforts, both uh, around the campus, on the grounds, you won't see that we do a lot of irrigation. You will see that we have plants that are native to Florida. We have redoubled our efforts for recycling. Um, even in our uh, food service, we don't use trays anymore because they take extra water to wash. So being uh, good stewards of the environment, it's not just a gimmick for FGCU. It is part of our DNA, and, and it's seen throughout the university in everything that we do. The environment, the whole movement towards environmental, environmental consciousness um, is not something that's going to go away. So for Florida Gulf Coast to get in the front of it at an early stage, that, that looks well in terms of setting an example for other universities around the country. Have you already started getting phone calls and people want to come over and see the things that you're doing? I, I talk with colleagues all over the country and also my colleagues here within the state of Florida. Uh, the Academic Building 7, I mentioned that earlier, that is a platinum, that's the highest level of uh, LEED certification that a building can attain. And we have one of those on uh, FGCU's campus. Our most recent residence hall is LEED certified as well. We've made a commitment to building buildings that are efficient for the long term. And we have an advantage. We don't have to retrofit a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We are still fairly new, so we can build the quality in as we go forward. You know, when you mentioned the solar panels, I thought about Thomas Edison and all the work that he did in this area. And here's Florida Gulf Coast University continuing to utilize energy in a proper way. So it seems apropos that a, a place where Thomas and Edison did a lot of his work and then a university is continuing to take it on to the next level. So that's outstanding. It, it seems uh, very apropos, as you say. Okay. Let's go to uh, the scholarships <clears throat> and the whole idea that the uh, enrollment of minority students at Florida Gulf Coast University has just been outstanding uh, since you came on board. Is that a direct correlation with the fact that you are the president of Florida Gulf Coast University or are there other factors that says uh, the outreach for minority students has just uh, tr you know, quadrupled, it seemed like, in terms of your enrollment. I think there, there are several factors that contribute to our increased enrollment of uh, minority students. Uh, one is that, yeah, we have re redoubled our efforts in uh, reaching out to those communities, not just within Southwest Florida, but throughout the state, and we're seeing some success for that. But the fact of the matter is, if you look nationwide, the demographics have shifted. Uh, we are increasingly becoming a more diverse country. And so now we're starting to see those students ready to go to college. And I think that not just FGCU, but I think if you look at the state university system, you will see over the last five to 10 years an increase in the diversity of their student body. So we are, we're experiencing some of that as well. Now, um, I think it may have been about 10 years ago, maybe less, maybe more, but uh, the, the state of Florida passed a law that says that minor, uh, minority status was not going to be a criteria for admittance into a university. Has that hurt or helped uh, the 
increase of diverse a diverse population of students in the state of Florida? I think for, I'll speak specifically for FGCU in, at least at first. I think for us to do, and as we are doing more outreach, we're letting those communities know about the high quality educational opportunity that's available. And I think that makes a, a big difference. Um, the students that we admit to FGCU, we are fully uh, confident that they're able to handle a college curriculum. We don't offer remedial uh, education for any of our students. So, stu so we find that if we show up more in different places in, those, in all of our communities, uh, both in Southwest Florida as well as across the East Coast and throughout the state of Florida, that once uh, students learn about us, that uh, they choose to come to FGCU. And, and it's uh, one thing that we don't talk a lot about, but a presentation was just made to our Foundation Board of Trustees, is our honors program. Our honors program attracts some of the best and the brightest students in this state. And we are really pleased that that program is growing. We have almost 300 students in that program right now. So we offer a spectrum of educational opportunities to students who are interested in getting what I think is the best undergraduate education in this state. How does the climate now in terms of the downturn in the economy nationwide uh, affect a university in terms of its ability to operate? Is it a, uh, I've once read somewhere that when the economy is bad, universities are doing great. Well, you know, I think one, what we have to do first and foremost is make good fiscal decisions. Mm -hmm. We have to decide what we can do and we have to make sure that we uh, bolster, not just protect, but bolster the academic <clears throat> enterprise, that's first and foremost. Uh, that requires us delaying the implementation of some programs, and we've done that. It requires us taking some measures to be more efficient, and we've done that as well. And it requires us to be very thoughtful as we go forward of what we're going to add and when we're going to add it. Not just academic programs, but that's fundamental, but also new, new buildings as well. So I, I would say to you, yeah, our enrollments are going up, and typically when the economy goes down, we see an uptick in the graduate and professional degree programs at universities and colleges, and we're seeing that at FGCU as well. You know, people seem to go back and try to improve their human capital. Right. When the economy turns around. They Develop more skills, more, more competencies. Yeah. Outstanding. Well, Dr. Bradshaw, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Is that all the time that I get here, Mr. <laughs> it's Mr. all we can give okay, you today, I, my It's friend. always a pleasure. Okay. Always a pleasure. Thank okay. you. Go stay, Eagles. Stay right there. Stay right there. As the saying goes on this particular show, for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like Dr. Wilson Bradshaw, president of Florida Gulf Coast University, and all his faculty, staff, and students who are doing it. When we come back, we're going to find out all the great things that's happening with the Quality Life Center. We'll be right back.